What's up everyone, Andrew Freed here. Today I got a really unique one for us. It's Invisible Man by Queen. Whether you've heard this before or you've never heard it before, like me, it's a really cool one to break down. I'll tell you why in a second, but first let's learn about it. Invisible Man was released in 1989 as a single from the album The Miracle. This song was written by Roger Taylor, the drummer. You'll see it's a very synth heavy tune, and that's what's gonna make it unique. Common in 80s recording, there's two bass parts, the synth part and the electric bass. The combo of this makes this really fat, awesome part. So we're gonna learn both parts, and we're gonna even try and do both parts at once. So let's jump right into it. So I'm on my website, Bass Freedom, where any of you guys as members can send in these requests. Today, I would like to thank Eddie A for sending in Invisible Man. This one is going to be different than the other breakdowns where we're really going to spend a lot of time to that main bass line. I couldn't find any live versions of this. If anyone in the comments wants to let me know why, I'm not sure. I don't know if Queen wasn't touring at that time. Was Freddie sick? I really don't know. So let me know. So before anything, let's give this a listen. I'm the invisible man. I'm the invisible, invisible, invisible man. Incredible how you can see right through me. Yeah. I can hear both parts. The electric bass is really low. It really does sound like Ghostbusters. The melody. This video. Alright, let's uh let's talk about this. Really cool baseline. In terms of notes, it's not playing a lot. It's definitely more the rhythmic aspect that makes this really cool in combination again with the two parts. I'm going to be using my octave pedal since in order to get my electric bass to sound like the synth, that's what I got to do. I'm not going to play synth keyboard or anything. I'm going to try to get my electric bass to sound like both parts. So here's what I think the first synth bass is doing. I can't 100% mimic that synth, but I can get close enough where you can feel that main part. All right, now that you just heard that, I'm gonna play the song again. See if you can hear and focus only on that synth part for the bass part I just did. So you can hear the synth part at the end of each phrase has the end. All right, now let's look at the electric bass part. And then we're gonna put these two together. So I'm gonna turn the pedal off. And now I'm going to play the electric bass. The electric bass is mixed quieter. You can tell it doesn't pop out as much. It does double these root notes. I think he's using a pick, so that's what we'll do. I'm gonna change my tone a little bit to be a little more cut edge, a little more cutting through. So when I turn it down, it's still there. It's more presence than obvious. Now that I played that, let's listen to the song and see if you could hear that within it. Again, two phrases that separate these parts. All you need to listen for is the end. One, two, three. 
So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have the synth part playing alone, and then I'm going to add the electric part. And you're going to hear them both together and see what you think. So what do you think? I don't sound like a synth bass from the 80s, but putting the parts together and if you mix that electric bass in kind of quieter, it really creates this nice fat tone. This happened a lot in the 80s where people would do multiple bass parts, and here's a really unique one that I think on top of the rhythmic 16th notes, that's what that is. It's really rhythmic 16th notes. I'll put the rhythm up here, and if you can hear that do 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 it's one note, it's in C. We're in C minor, by the way. And this C minor type of groove is just rhythmic and awesome. Hey, if you're enjoying this, please give the video a like. It would mean a lot to me and it helps the channel out a bunch. When he says John Deacon's name, by the way, Freddie says all their names in the song. It's cool, you're Freddie Mercury, Brian May, Brian May, John Deacon, it's cool. They, they say everyone's name in the song. I don't know why, but during this John Deacon part, you can hear the electric bass is a little more present. John Deacon. John Deacon. I don't want to ruin this song for you guys, but it really does sound like Ghostbusters. You know, if there's something strange in the neighborhood. And then he goes. When you hear a sound. It's got a similar melody to Ghostbusters, and even the chorus has similar chord progression. I wonder if that's got to be a thing. People talking about this sounding like Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> gotta love the synth pop from the 80s. So you might be like, what if I want to play this? I can't always play two parts at once. Are you playing this live at a gig? You want to cover it? Anything. There's a way to kind of mesh these parts together that I came up with. We can combine the synth part a little bit with the rhythmic part. I'm going to keep the synth pedal on for this and check it out. So the combination of the electric bass doing that little hammer on thing and the synth part gives it this sort of effect. It's hard. It's hard. It's fast on the fingers. That's just a cool part I heard that I feel like meshes well. So it's not exactly what's happening, but it's kind of a combination. If you want to try and even combine more parts, you can get a little more free with this. Here's another way you could play it. Let's try it a little bit with the song. Now I'm going to do another combo part that I think works over this and you should be able to play. So when there's a song that has two parts at once, find a way to gel in each part if you can. No one's going to be like, that's not what he's playing. There is other parts to this song. We're not going to deep dive into it because it's pretty straightforward. In the chorus, the Invisible Man part, he keeps that pedaling root note, but he changes the rhythm just a little bit. Check it out. Just keeps that pedaling root note. If you struggle with some syncopation, some rhythm, this is a great song for you to learn. The ending of the chorus just pulls us back into the main riff.
There's also a bridge as well. Check this out. Deacon gets pretty active over this. It's a pretty cool bridge. Then there's an awesome Brian May, Brian May solo, where the main groove comes back. That's essentially the song, guys. I mean, this is different today because I usually have like the theory to break down and part by part by part. But today was really big on the multiple sections, multiple parts, synth and electric bass. It's really cool to try and hear both parts. And obviously, this is a sick song. I now know it. I now know how to play it. And I now like it. It's I love it. It's I love Queen too, but this is a really sick song. Thanks for sticking around and watching this breakdown today, guys. Keep them coming on Bass Freedom. This was a really fun one, and I can't wait for the next one. You guys have a good one. I'll see you next time. Peace.